Hi, Dr. Diazio here. When you think of the C word, what do you think of? I think of creativity, another vile and repulsive word, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, we regularly talk about creativity through the arts and the artists, such as Salvador Dali and their great work, or musicians such as Lady Gaga, or designers and how great they are, like Steve Jobs and the works that they produce. We even regularly talk about these creative companies such as Google or Apple. But how has this perspective of high status companies and high status professions influence or inhibit our understanding of creativity and innovation and what underlying values are within them? How have these elitist views skewed our understanding of creativity? And is there a way for us to broaden our understanding of creativity and break from this elitist view? And I believe, yes, we can. So what can we do to compare these high or elitist uh, views and non-high status professions that potentially reshape our understanding of creativity or the future of understanding of creativity. If you are a professor, artist, or designer, beware. Let's look at a few professions. Stage actors versus children's party clowns. I would be the first to admit stage actors are highly skilled, but they're basically following and reading a script and following the directions of a director. Now compare that to someone who hires herself out as a children's party clown for birthday parties. That person has to create their own makeup, their own persona, their own costume, their own name, and they have to deal with a set of interactivities, fun activities that corresponds to the children, their age, the event, and even unexpected developments and the children's personalities. Lots of creativity researchers have focused and studied the talents and creativity of stage actors, but has anyone studied party clowns? No. What about ballet dancers and football cheerleaders? As with actors, ballet dancers are elite with their skills. They practice thousands and thousands of hours on their craft, but they're basically following choreography that was created hundreds of years ago. Now compare that to cheerleaders who have to create their own cheers collaboratively with themselves. Then they have to decide the routine when, at what point in the game uh, is best to execute those cheers. Lots of creativity researchers have studied ballet dancers, but has anyone studied cheerleaders? No. Musicians compared to vintage motorcycle mechanics. Performing sheet music doesn't require creativity. Contrasting that to vintage motorcycle mechanics where every single motorcycle was different and slightly different from the other ones that were produced. They all provided their own unique set of problems. They take them apart, they analyze them in order to solve what is wrong. Lots of creativity researchers have studied musicians but has anyone studied engine mechanics? No. Writers of novels and short stories compared to ministers who write Sunday sermons. In contrast to the first three occupations, being a fiction writer takes a lot of creativity. But imagine a church minister who composes um, original sermons and most likely the several prayers that they enact on Sundays as well, each and every Sunday, each sermon involves great cure creativity. Lots of creativity researchers have studied novelists, but has anyone ever studied the creativity of ministers? No. How we think research frame our understanding of creativity and innovation has significant impact on our future ability to apply these concepts to challenging social problems that penetrate all walks of life. We cannot just focus on the elitist professions and high and perspectives 
when we have social challenges from all walks of life to solve. Some of these challenges include climate change, eliminating world poverty, or providing access to clean drinking water to everyone. It is our interest to continue to challenge these assumptions and search out new areas of research that offer insight into the existing values and cultural concepts embedded in these concepts of creativity and innovation. What does this say about the argument for the creative class? Is it moot and does it collapse? Or are they open to studying garbage men and women, dog walkers, how they are creative, or even puppeteers? So I think it's time to start thinking differently about creativity. And I encourage you to challenge your assumptions, researchers, professors, managers, people in charge of being creative and think of the underlying assumptions within and search out new areas of research and thinking they may offer other and new insight into the other dirty C word.